Hello and welcome to Mid-Atlantic Federal Credit Union's Small Business University. My name is Kelly Leonard and each month I have the privilege of hosting this dynamic event. Thank you for joining us on the live stream as well as here in the television studio. Each month we bring the business community together to network, to collaborate, and to share best practices in an effort to stimulate regional economic development. Today, we have the distinct pleasure of having a, veer, a very dear friend of mine, Ms. Tamika Montgomery, who's joining us here from the U.S. Small Business Administration. Tamika is a presidential appointee, and she oversees the Office of Entrepreneurial Development. So without further ado, I present to you Ms. Tamika Montgomery. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, Kelly. So this morning, I'm going to talk to you about business and specifically whether or not your business idea is valid. And so before I begin, let me explain to you what I mean by valid. And all I mean by valid is, is, is it justifiable? Does it make sense? So what I'm going to do this morning is walk you through a process that you can use to determine whether or not your business idea really makes sense, if it's valid. So, as entrepreneurs, you all know that you are problem solvers, right? Entrepreneurs are problem solvers. And so when you think about your business idea, actually, what I'd like for you to begin with is to start with the problem. And the reason why you wanna start with the problem is because problems remain, right? But the solutions, can change. And so an example to illustrate this that I'd like to share with you is the problem of time management. And I'm sure we have all had that problem of time management. But if you think about the years and how we've dealt with that problem, if you think about the solutions that have evolved over the years, first there was the paper solution, right? I think many of us back in the day might have had either the, the Franklin Covey or the timekeeper, right, to address our problem of time management. Then in the 90s, it was the Palm Pilot, right? If you all remember the Palm Pilot and you keep your, and then we, now we have our, our smartphones, right? And we, we keep it on our smartphones and then we have apps, time management apps. Again, the problem of time management remains, but the solution has changed. And so as you think about your business, what I want you to do is to fall in love with the problem. What tends to happen as entrepreneurs is rather than falling in love with the problem, we tend to fall in love with our idea, our solution. And so what happens is, is you've, fallen, you've committed yourself to a particular solution, to a particular business idea, and you've already begun to invest your emotions into that idea. You've probably begun to invest money and resources into that idea before you've even validated that it's the right solution for the problem. So just keep this in mind as you think about your, your business ideas to, to fall in love with the problem. And so to begin that process of falling in love with the problem, what I want you to first do is to, is to create a hypothesis. So if we go back to many years ago in school and we learned about a hypothesis, that really is an assumption that has yet to be validated or has yet to have evidence to prove it's true. It's a statement, an explanation about something. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a hypothesis about this idea or this problem that we're thinking about. And so to begin with, I'd like for you to think about your customer and to describe your customer. And you have to be specific. So, you know, you can't say my, my target market or my customers are millennials. Too broad, you know, millennials, yeah, they're 18 to 34, that's the age span of millennials. 
but you can narrow that down even further. You know, is it millennials of a certain socioeconomic status? Is it millennials based on race and ethnicity? Is it millennials in a particular geographical region of our, of our country or in your city? Um, is it uh, millennials who have a certain type of style or whatever? You need to be very specific. Same if you're, if you're a customer or small businesses. Okay, small businesses in what industry? In which industry? industry? Where are they located? Be very specific. And that takes time. So really be thoughtful and take the time that you need to really narrow down your, um, your customer base. Peter Drucker, who is the management guru, he says something that I love. And what he says is that the, um, let me make sure I get this right. He says, the aim of marketing is to know the customer so well that the product or service basically sells itself. So that's your objective. And the only way that you can know your customer so well is if you really take the time to be specific and really narrow in and hone in on who your target market is. So we're beginning our hypothesis, right? So be specific, start in by describing your customer. And so then I want you to think about what's your problem. Remember, it's not about the solution just yet. It's about the problem. So think about what's your, what's your problem? What's your problem? What is that thing that you're going to focus on? And so I love this format here in terms of building this hypothesis. So here I've kind of put in my own little example. I believe target customer in this situation is men who care about their personal grooming. So I believe that men who care about their personal grooming have a problem or have a need for feeling comfortable in traditionally female-centric nail salons and spas. So they have a problem with this, right? And so doesn't he look like he has a problem? He doesn't look very comfortable there, right? <laughs> He doesn't, I don't know, maybe his wife drug him in there. Maybe she, maybe she is the one who has, um, likes to have male, male grooming, you know. But um, he looks like he's been drug in there. And so, so think about that. This right here is the thing I think, I, as I encounter entrepreneurs, I think this is a challenge for them. I love this cartoon in that it says, if I were our teenage girl market, I would love our product. And then the other gentleman says, well, have you actually talked to any to make sure? And they say, what? Leave this room, <laughs> right? And, and if we're gonna really understand our customer and the problem that they have, we have to engage with real people, right? We have to actually get out and talk to people. And I would even encourage you to step outside of your immediate network. And the reason why is because our friends and our family are so encouraging to us oftentimes. They want us to be successful and people tend to be nice, right? Which is great, this is good ego booster but you need to get, go a few steps further and really go out and talk to people who you think could pot potentially be your target customer, that specific demographic or that specific um, target customer that, I, that you defined earlier. And so the way that you do this, and, and when you think about this, you know, your goal in your conversations with, with your target customer is to find out their pain, to find out their problem, how they articulate the problem. Because you want to articulate it in the way that they see it, not the way that you see it. Because your business is about serving them and not about serving yourself, right? So get out the building, talk directly to customers, and I know sometimes people may use a landing page and they may use a survey, but to be honest, I think while that's great, there is nothing like having direct one-on-one -on -one conversations. 
And the reason why is because you can ask why, right? If someone says to you, wow, that's, a, that's an interesting idea. Why? Why? Oh, I think that's great. Yeah, I love it. Why? Because you want to really dig deep. You want to make sure they're not just being nice to you. And so asking why and going deeper and deeper really helps you dig and understand whether or not the solution that you're proposing is one that really makes sense to them um, and whether or not this could be a viable and valid business idea. So come up with seven questions very easily. Come up with seven questions just to get started so that helps you figure out, um, have that conversation with them. And what I also like to say is shorten that time frame as much as possible around getting in front of people. You know, I put on here two weeks. You know, talk to 10 people in two weeks. That's, that's not really a lot of people in a very short, uh, in two weeks, I mean, that's five people a week. You can do, that's one a day. You know, if you want to be aggressive, you can do more, because really you need to talk to more than 10 people. But the idea is just get moving, you know. So, after you've had that conversation and you've spoken with people, and you think you understand their problem from their point of view, then you can begin to think about, okay, what's the solution for this problem? And I, and this, I really want you to think about where I have that exclamation mark there, is stop trying to sell people what you want and instead sell them what they need. And I think sometimes as entrepreneurs, as again, as I said earlier, we get so attached to an idea or a particular solution and we want people to want that, maybe because that's something that we wanted, when in fact, it's not about us, it's about the customer or the potential customer. So, we're continuing with our hypothesis statement. So, in this solution, uh, by creating a male-centric environment for hand and foot grooming, we will help men to feel comfortable with a spa-like experience. So we're just continuing, we'll put it all together shortly. So, when you bring this all together, those things, what you come up with is, I believe men who care about their personal grooming have the problem of feeling comfortable in a traditional female-centric nail salon and spa. By creating a male-centric environment for hand and foot grooming, we will help men to feel comfortable in a spa-like experience. Are you interested in learning more? It's a very simple process, but it's a way where you take your target market or who you believe is your target customer, and then the solution that you are proposing, bringing those together to have a conversation with your customers. And again, as I said, the idea is that you are curious, you're on this fact-finding mission. And so you really want to not try to sell them a solution, but the goal of the conversation is to really understand their problem and to go deep in the problem. And so this is that solution. Now, if you're a gentleman who cares about your personal grooming, who cares if your, your feet look good, <laughs> who cares if your, your hands, are, your, nail, your nails are clean and all of that, you know, if we go back, and I want to go back to that other slide, <laughs> you know, it's either that, right? He doesn't look happy. I know when I go to the spa, it's supposed to be a calming and relaxing experience versus this, you know. Not for all men, because perhaps not all men care about this. Um, and also, I think what I also thought was interesting in this particular picture, um, as I used the example earlier when people say my target market, 
mm, millennials, that this right here is a particular millennial, right? You know, even if you think about in terms of narrowing the market, you know, what's the cost for a service like this, right? So even segmenting that market out for people who are willing to pay for this experience is there's something there, right? So again, I want to review kind of those steps. So as I said, you know, when you think about your business idea and whether or not it's valid or whether or not it makes sense, don't begin with the solution and let the solution drive everything. And again, your solution is your idea in this case, right, is your idea. But don't lead with that, rather lead with the problem. So your goal first is to fall in love with the problem, you know. So figure out what's your problem? What's that thing that you want to know about in and out? Begin with your problem. Secondly, we're going to begin to create that hypothesis statement. And your goal is to prove it, whether it's true or false. And so when you do that, you have to know who your customer is, right? Your customer market, you need to be very specific and focused. So take the time now to understand your market. And as I referred to earlier, Peter Drucker says, the aim of marketing is to understand the customer so well that the product or service basically sells itself. And that's what we want. Then you think about the problem, right? Really break down the problem, articulate it from your, your customer's point of view. That's how we begin with the problem. Then, once you truly understand the problem, then you can come up with a solution. Because the in business, we have to be able to pivot. We have to be able to change. And so it's better early on not to get so attached to the idea that it's difficult to pivot or change course. So that's where the solution comes in, right? And so then we pull it all together. You can go out and talk to your potential customers, your prospective customers, and see whether or not the problem, you truly understand the problem, and whether or not the solution that you're, pro you're, you're, you're proposing solves that problem. Because while every problem has a solution, not every solution solves a problem, right? So the other thing, as I said, when you're talking with your customers, is about curiosity and understanding and digging deeper and asking why. Because liking your idea is not the same as buying your product, right? So, oh yeah, I like that idea, why? So the goal is to get rid of the false positives. So, and so once you find all of this out, I would say go for it, jump, and enjoy the experience. Entrepreneurship is a risk. But the goal is you can eliminate the unnecessary mistakes if you take the time in the beginning to go through these steps so that you can really enjoy this experience, this entrepreneurial journey. And the SBA, the Small Business Administration, is there to walk with you, to jump with you, um, and you can find out more about our services at www.sba.gov. So thank you, and I'll take some questions now. Yes? There's a mic right there. Sylvia Henderson, ideasuccessnetwork.com. Can you give us some examples of those seven questions that you would ask? You know what? Um, it's so specific to the type of solution. So for example, let's just use the, the nail spa for guys. And so if I came to you, if this was a, an idea that I had, I might ask you, um, so how often do you, do you visit, a, a, do, you get, do you groom your nails? You know, is that important to you? He may say, no, you know, it's not. 
So have you ever had problems with ingrown toenails or, you know, <laughs> I mean, not a pretty conversation, but, <laughs> but that is a problem. Somebody has to cut them, right? So I would say it really depends on the idea, but there are no standard questions. It really depends. Other questions? Hi, Stephanie Lewis, The Entrepreneur Source. After you validate, and this is a good idea and they want to move forward, what do you say as working at the SBA, the best next steps for that person? Yeah. So, you know, I said that the SBA and our resources are there to walk with you along that journey. I mean, you need to develop a business plan. And, and a business plan can look, it doesn't have to be a 30 or 40 page business plan. Um, a lot of our resources use the business model canvas, but you need to develop your roadmap, right? So essentially your roadmap. So now that you've validated it, I would say let's sit down with a business advisor and begin to develop that roadmap of how you move forward. Because I think what you wanna do is create, if it's a product or a service, develop it as, as quickly as you can for a low amount of resources that it takes to develop that product or service so you can get it out there and see how customers respond to it. You don't want to invest a lot of money into it, but you want to test it out. Let me just give you a, a, a good example of that. My husband was driving one day and he, he came across this gentleman and this man had taken a truck, had taken out some of the sides of a, like a moving truck and put plexiglass and he was called, I think, the Shape Up King. And so he obviously couldn't afford to get a, a building for a barber shop. So he has converted like this U-Haul type truck and had a line of cars waiting to get shaped up. So that's a first step to test it out. Do people like his service? Do they like his, his style or his cut? That he can then, that's his minimally viable product or service. So he can try it there before moving on to the next stage. Next question. I'm Sheila O'Gilby, O'Gilby Transportation Services, and also with um, Delta Sigma Theta Economic Development Committee. So my question is about um, online resources. Mm -hmm. For someone that doesn't have a lot of time to like, go to meetings or workshops, uh, what online resources are available through the SBA? Yeah. Gosh, sba.gov has tons of online resources. We have um, our online learning center. So if you go to our, our homepage, you can click on the learning center. We have tons of courses on how to start a business. If you're already in business and you want to get into government contracting, there are courses that really show you how to pursue government contracting, how to get certified, as well as there is a business plan template on our website as well. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Cordell Okafo, and I work with Shop Promotional Products. I want to ask this question: If you have, if you have your target identified, your target market or your prospective customers, how do you deal with um, rejection? How do you deal with rejection? Yes, you deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's a part of the process. And so however you rationalize it, where you say, okay, well that just gets me closer to a yes. So every no gets me closer to a yes. However you rationalize it, but honestly, if you're gonna be in business, you're gonna have to overcome any fear of rejection or any apprehension. Because if people don't know about your business, then you're not gonna be in business. Any other questions? Good morning, Carla Carell with Aligned Business Designs. Um, my question is, you talked about the assessment process that one needs to go, to go through prior to starting a business. What would you say a reasonable time frame would be for that assessment? You know, quick, and, and, and what I mean by quick is, you don't wanna go into analysis paralysis, right? Your goal is to validate you want to just make sure you're walking down the right path, right? Mm -hmm. So talk to, um, talk to as many people as you can to really validate the idea so that you can then move on to your minimally viable product or service so that you can mm -hmm. 
begin to develop something and start delivering it to the customer. But what you don't want to do is spend months <laughs> continuing okay. that analysis okay. and analysis. I think the good thing to think about is in the software industry, you know, they often have a 1.0 or a beta. That's right. They know it's not perfect, but that through the process, they're going to learn from the customer to and then they're going to tweak it. And okay. so you should think of it in that same way as well. Thank Get you. it out there. Thank you. Good morning, thank you. Uh, my name is Brian Chisholm with Conference Direct. I had a, I like the comment you said about face-to-face, one-on-one conversations, getting out, meeting people. Can you give a couple examples, and I know I may be able to find this on SBA.gov, but can you give a couple of examples of events that you all are doing that will bring people together? Yeah, yeah. So SBA, we have district offices all across the United States. Our district office may host events, whether they're, they're often information-based, so for example, cybersecurity, you know, what are some of the challenges of small businesses as it relates to cybersecurity, if you're interested in government contracting. Um, but then also our resource partners, small business development centers, women's business centers, SCORE, they also host a number of events all with the purpose of bringing together entrepreneurs to learn and gain information. And so those are great opportunities to connect with business owners for potential partnerships, but then also who could be potential customers. So you gotta get out, right? It's easy for us as business owners, especially if we're very small, to think that we're alone. But even forums like this allows us to come <coughs> together and meet people as well who could be customers or partners. Awesome, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank Tamika you. for these words of encouragement. I know it's probably unsettling for some people to fall in love with their problems. <laughs> but I often say, you know, the people that are solving the biggest problems are cashing the biggest checks. And so if we want to cash the biggest checks and sort of live out this whole idea of economic flourishing, we are going to need to fall in love with our problems. Yes. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. It was um, great. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. And thank those of you on the live stream for joining us. This concludes this episode of the Small Business University. I invite you to join us back. We have a slight programming change for December. We will be getting together on Friday, December 16th. But before then, we've got some great events lined up, including some training to help you to use your smartphone to do video production, as well as the International Trade Forum. So if your business, if you want to go global, you definitely want to make sure that you're here. For more information, visit mymcmedia.org. Thank you again for your time, and have a great day.